What's up, Lashinistas? Welcome to the show. This is the Live Bay Podcast, where we talk about the ever-growing eyelash business. If this is your first time listening to our show, welcome. This podcast is dedicated to helping you grow as a lash artist and or lash business owner. So whether you work for yourself or someone else, this podcast is for you. Hey guys, this is Mike and Shauna Jones. We are the owners of Live Bay Lash. Our heart is to share with you our uphill battle in the slash industry and to show you what started out of a tiny bedroom in our house, extremely broke, has turned into an eight-figure company. We are here to encourage you during your lash journey and to give you guys a real raw version of what things really like. Yeah. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to start a product line. Now, some of you guys, if you've heard us give this talk before... A lot of things have changed. Yeah, you probably also heard a lot of our talks. It might be time to just go do it now. (laughs) Uh, But for those of you who haven't heard this yet, we're going to give you some really great tips on it and kind of help you guys, you know, give you like some really good starting points on how you can do it if it's something you really are strongly considering doing. Before we jump into that, you might have heard we do these classes once in a blue moon. (laughs) Uh, So we have some classes coming up. I'm going to look at my phone here, my cheat. Uh, We're going to be in Newark, New Jersey, March 22nd. Buffalo, New York, March 29th. Vegas, March 29th, Portland, April 5th, Seattle, April 12th, Dallas, April 19th, Oklahoma City. Wow. Yes. April 26th, back to Vegas, April 26th, and May 3rd in St. Louis. And there's a whole shitload more. Yeah. You just got to go to Live Bay Classes and check out the schedule. (laughs) We still got the VR ones going on. Uh, We do have our online memberships. If you haven't heard yet, we've said this a thousand times, the membership program, this is what it's for. Okay. It is a monthly membership where we mentor you guys call in get your questions answered like if you have real life situations chances are we've been through all of them and we're happy to give you guys advice walk you through it and give you the best perspective on things you also get 20 percent off products you get a free gift of the month we go live once a month you guys you have direct access to shauna and i yeah you also get a hundred dollars off classes which i don't think we've really talked about that your lips are really shiny yeah i just put lip gloss on i could tell you want some yeah (laughs) um yeah, it's an awesome membership. You can cancel anytime, ninety nine a month, and you just get you just get full on access to us. So it's amazing. So whether you're a lash artist or you know you're you know starting your own business or opening your own salon, like this podcast is for you. This podcast is for you. <laughs> uh, last but not least, we are in Canada. Uh, there yes. are more products. We're still stocking slowly but surely. COVID's really put a damper on things, but the Canadian uh, warehouse is rocking and rolling. We, get, we have a lot of sales surprisingly coming out of there, and we're very excited. No duty tax. If you live in Canada, make sure you're ordering from Live Bay Canada, not the U.S. side. Yes. If you get your bill and it's like, why is all these duty taxes for? You know you ordered on the wrong site. Yes. LiveBayCanada.com. All right. Is there anything else? Lash T on Facebook. Lash T, T-E-A, our Facebook group. Make sure to join that as well. Yeah. And we're on Amazon and follow OB Manufacturing if you are interested in your own products, which we're talking about right now. Yeah. So jumping into the episode. So uh, I think the common denominator, let's go back a second. So let me give you the evolution of a lash artist, right? You start out, you take a class, you learn how to perfect your art. Then you start learning how to get advertised and get clients. Finally, you become so busy, you're ready to blow your brains out. You start hiring people and teaching them. You give them some clients. Next thing you know, you've got a few lash artists underneath you. You get a salon and you're finally like, hey, how can I get my bottom line down? I need to get my products for cheaper so I can up my profits. And then I'd also like to sell some on the side to make some extra money. And that's kind of how this process goes. And so when you get to this step, it's like, now what? Where do we find that? I want to call, you know, 1-800-LASH supplies and get this stuff from China. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So uh, this is an uphill battle we had to fight over the years when we were trying to start our own line just because it's tough to find a really good vendor. Vendors are notorious, especially ones overseas, for sending you really great samples. And then when you order in bulk, sending you trash. Yes. Yeah. But I think nowadays, like we all have access like to it. I like that orange mat too. Those are really nice. Thanks. They're so grown out. I need a fill. I need, I need like a full day to just kind of fix myself. That's why I have glasses on because my mom bags are on fleek right now. But you didn't even have time before we go to Napa though. I know. I'm so excited. Um, anyways, so back when we started our product line, I'm so blessed. So even though it was like we had just no idea what we were doing, I feel like the... Um, the number of artists or people that were wanting to start, you know, their own lash line was very limited. Now we see it so often, especially within us. It's like, you know, we have girls that, you know, leave or there's just artists in general and they're like, hey, I want to start a product line. And 
So now it's like I feel like the companies overseas are a little bit behind. Number one, everything's delayed because of COVID still. Uh, Korean borders are shut. Raw materials have gone up overseas. So um, all prices across the board have gone up. But um, if you're a lash artist, all you have to do is really go into your inbox, you know, on Instagram or (laughs) Facebook. And it's like you can get tweezers, you can get glue, you can get lashes, you can get whatever you want. So good day, sir. We are eyelash manufacturer. All the time. Go Go to LinkedIn. Yeah. Go to Alibaba. Yes, you can go to LinkedIn. You can go to Alibaba. Uh, but there's just a few things that you really want to... Go to wanna... Lash YouTube channels and look in the comments. They're trying to sneak in there. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. And be careful. Here's what they'll do. They'll grab an invoice of like us or one of the other bigger companies and go, hey, you know, we make these things for LiveBay. And you're yeah. like, oh, it's like I a found fake invoice. They supplier. did it to us. They yeah. did it to us in the beginning. They handed us some tweezers that were from Bella. And they were like, we supply them. And I'm like, really? It must be good. It must be good. They had the packaging and a fake it pro forma. And I ordered like a thousand or two thousand and they were all bad. Yeah, not it one of them gripped. Horrible. <laughs> it was so horrible. Lesson learned. The guy took off in his minivan with no <laughs> license plate, peeled out. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, wow. Um, so yeah, it's it is a lot of uh it's, it's a lot of research. It's a lot of um, back and forth. You're going to pay a lot of money for samples. Like that's just how they get you. Um, you know, you can pay anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks for a sample. Um, right now, I, I believe everything is so delayed more than it ever used to be. Like, oh, I just thought of a really great place. What? The trade shows. Oh, yeah, the trade shows. The but beauty- there's not really trade shows going on right I now. I know, but I'm just saying when the, when the beauty shows are back, mm-hmm. the, those vendors show up like crazy. Oh, they're, yeah. they're walking around like crazy looking to just to sell you stuff. And I even saw they have a booth this year at the IBS show. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But I was going to say there is a lot of research into it. The research is basically just getting everything in your hands, like the samples. Um, so what I would recommend doing is, you know, going on Alibaba, going on LinkedIn. You want to keep in mind that when you're trying to find like the vendor for you, it's not just quality, it's communication. Because with me, that was the hardest part of the process because obviously a lot of this stuff is overseas. Um, Soon it will be here in the US, but for now a lot of it is overseas. So there's a time difference. With me was the communication. Like, you know, obviously I I still have to stay up super late at night, which doesn't matter because our kids are up. But um, the communication and them responding like in a timely matter, that was the most frustrating part. Because when you start to like get samples that you like, you're like, hey, I love that sample, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if they're taking like days or like a week to reply, like that's not going to work out because you have to, you have to think of the long-term effect of it. Like, let's say you, you, you're in communication, you're getting, you know, let's say lash trays and you're needing to put in orders, you're getting busier, you need to tweak things. You're like, hey, got a bad batch or whatever. That communication needs to be there and it needs to be there quickly. So what I, you know, value about my distributors that I have now is, um, they've learned I'm a psycho. So when I write them, they're like, oh shit, like Shauna's pissed. I got to write back right away. And, you know, we both are very, um, lenient with like staying up late, late, they'll stay up, you know, till all, you know, mornings or whatever, just to reply back to me. So we have this great communication. I feel like that's like really a big issue with, with finding the perfect vendor is that communication. It's really tough. Yeah. And, um, don't be alarmed when they say, Hey, it's going to be a this much, you know, like give you a dollar amount for the samples. Like a minimum order or? No, no, for, oh, the, for samples. the samples. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of people go, lot. well, they, I wanted a sample and they said it was 50 bucks for a tray of glue and a Plus tweezer. Plus shipping. <laughs> Plus shipping, yeah. Don't freak out. It's part of the process. You're yeah. going to, it's, everybody has to go through it. You might have to go through five or 10 vendors trying to find the right one for you yeah. too. Just because, it, like I said, it could be either they're a scumbag, you know, trying to just take your money or the stuff that you get's not up to par or, you know, I mean, there's so many reasons. Or like she said, the communication thing that's massive you know what i mean like they think she's crazy they'll, they'll hit her up. she'll hit them up on the weekend and be like hey you know i'm missing these trays i'm missing this and they'll be like shauna it weekend we sleep relax play with <laughs> yeah, family like, we're like well in america we don't we work like psycho so <laughs> yeah capitalism no kidding yeah and we just like you know they think we're crazy their holidays holy crap they won't even pick up the phone yeah. they won't even take payment no so you got that's the other downside about ordering overseas and and, and i get it listen you know, it is what it is right now. Until we can find a way to do $6 a day labor in the U.S., we're going to have to do outsourcing. You know what I mean? But uh, we do have a solution we're working on. Yeah. You taking my brush? Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. I was having fun playing with it. <laughs> oh I was entertaining myself. Okay. It's something my son does with his action figure. I'm going yeah. to um, <laughs> Squirrel. 
Listen, uh, obviously it's no secret we're working on bringing the manufacturing here to the U.S. Uh, you know, we're, we're working on building fully automated machines to make the lashes here. We are literally going to be doing the form fill and seal, making our own glues. The only thing we can't quite do in-house yet is tweezers, just because of the cost of metal. I can't compete with Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be bringing all that stuff back to the U.S. And that what that means is we'll be able to label and make your products for you for literally the same price you'd be getting it from China for, but it's a higher grade, higher quality product. It's actually going to be a little bit more expensive than China because you're getting your product, your bulk products within like three to seven days opposed to How much to more expensive to tell them, China? How much more? Well, I don't know. I've got to work out those figures. But, I mean, it's just the like you're dealing with someone in the U.S. You know what I mean? Like you're getting... You can have it delivered to your front door. Yeah, you're getting a bulk order within three to seven days and the quality is like outmatched. We'll send Kalani in a box truck with some edibles. Yeah. <laughs> just drive it right to you. So... Right to your front door in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're really excited for this you know in the meantime there are some things that we're you know obviously still getting from overseas um until we are fully functioning here in our warehouse so um i was gonna say too because everyone's like okay great so i found a sample i love it i love the communication with the vendor so far then what do i do like and then people also get tripped out if they ask for payment by paypal um I pay, you know, some of my vendors by PayPal. We've we have such a good relationship. Sometimes I'll do it through friends and family, um, just because like we've been working together for years. I would not recommend doing that because you want to make sure you're you're clicking goods and services just to protect yourself yeah. if for some reason something like doesn't go right. Um, but let's say you found your dream lashes, right? So what you want to do is you don't want to go out and be like, okay, I am going to spend twenty thousand dollars. You want to slowly work up to that. Um, I would imagine, too, with business, usually you're not going to go balls to the wall and order $20,000 after you received like one good sample. So you always want to work up to higher amounts because... Build the trust. Yeah, because one good sample is is easy for them to do. It's quality gets messed up when there's 5,000 trays being sent to you. Um, quality control overseas is uh, very difficult. I don't care what they say. Um, I mean, there's times when we get lashes in and we're opening. When we go to ship, I have them unseal and open every single lash just to make sure when the box is opened, everything is perfect in there. You know, there's not anything crazy going on in that tray. But um, you always want to work up because you don't you don't know who you're really working with right away. One amazing sample is easy to get things get trippy when you're getting 5,000. So work up, just get a little bit. Okay, I'll take 500. But a lot of them, uh, a lot of the companies overseas will ask for minimum orders of like, you know, 2,000. So you just really have to be careful with that. I always recommend going through, you know, um, paying through Alibaba. If you do PayPal, you know, just make sure you're doing goods and services to protect yourself. You can do um, Western Union. Um, would you recommend Western Union? No. No, because once the money's sent and the, and the receiver picks it up, it's gone. Okay, no Western Union. Pay, PayPal and Alibaba, for sure. Yeah. But what I was going to say is this, too. You had, you had made a point, and I don't even remember what it was. I was waiting for you to finish. I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry. About the... Um, About ordering something. Oh, quality. yes, knowing who you're ordering from. Yeah. So here's the other thing you don't realize. Everybody assumes when someone says we're an eyelash manufacturer, they're the real McCoy because you can't physically see them. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people out there that are just brokers. Oh, yeah. They're middle persons mm -hmm. who have access to somebody in the factory. So what they're doing is they're going in, they're saying, hey, the price is, you know, XYZ per tray, and they're putting in an extra, you know, 25 50 even a dollar on every tray that you order. And then they're just walking it next door to the factory. They're almost like a broker, a conduit mm -hmm. between you and the factory. Um, when I've talked to, like, our distributors, like, they've physically shown us pictures of their actual facility and, like, seeing how they actually make them but there is literally like hundreds of these things over in like Chindao, china like there is so many of these things and so you just gotta be really careful make sure that when you talk to them ask like hey you know how do i know you're actually you know somebody from the manufacturer or from the factory and not an actual broker and they're gonna have to go through a lot to try and show and proof up and most of the time they can't do that because they're very good about protecting a lot of that proprietary information if it really is the manufacturer they'll have no issue showing you guys that stuff yeah also, once you become, you know, 
let's say, you know, you become like a really big company, you know, you want to make sure that you're securing your production lines. So, um, you know, an issue that we've always had is just our growth. It's not like an issue. It's a super big blessing, but we have always had this issue with growth within our company. So when we, when our e-commerce took off, I literally was having to go back and forth with my distributors like, hey, listen, um, I will give you like, you know, 50, 100 grand. You have to secure a production line for me. Like I need to make sure that you are pre-making my magnetic boxes. And when I need something, you guys have it in stock right then and there to where it can be shipped within a week or two. Because sometimes it takes three to six months, you know, especially with COVID, to actually get your supplies. And as you become bigger and bigger and bigger, you can't wait that long. So it's a lot of communication. Tell them um, about Black Friday. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That just instantly gave me anxiety. So Black Friday, huge. I mean, ever since Black Friday too, our sales have never been higher. We're just going and going. Black Friday, I pre-ordered lashes and to, they- To the tune of about almost 100,000 trays. Yeah. So we were dropping about, yeah, a good amount of money. And so- um, We maxed out the Amex a few times and (laughs) it has no limit. Yeah. So uh, Black Friday comes around or like the week before Black Friday. I'm literally like the devil. I'm like, where the fuck are my- Like I was- yeah, if you were on WhatsApp, you'd be like, oh my gosh, this should be banned. I was so pissed. I'm like, my, I have no tracking. What is going on? So uh, yeah, so what ended up happening for Black Friday was we had to update all the lashes that were out of stock that we ordered for Black Friday. We updated them because I'm like, I'm not going to ruin my sale because my there's like a you know a delay with my lashes so basically what had happened was there was something that happened at the port where uh somebody picked up like literally uh, like a hundred and something cartons of our lashes and then had to take them back to the port so there was like a week delay of our lashes so for black friday we didn't have our lashes and i was like sweating bullets we like were, they better come we were trying to send people down get a semi truck anything we could just to get it to go to la we were bribing the people at the ports it know. was such a mess but they were so backed up on their materials from covid and everything going on that there was a huge delay Finally, like they They promised us too, we'd have everything in time. And so we paid extra for the shipping. I paid, I I paid like 32,000 in shipping. I'm sure I got ripped off, but that's another thing too, is like, you want to be careful, careful with like freight charges and you want to make sure that that there's a lot to it. So I would say first thing, shipping agent, get a shipping agent. That's, that's crucial. They're going to make sure that you're not getting like totally screwed over with, um, with your shipping fees. Um, because if you're like, Hey, I need this and I just need it door to door. They're going to use their broker and you never really see like, you never see like a bill from DHL or you never see anything. It's just these like hidden fees where people are like sneaking up. So first things first, if you want to start your own line, go on Alibaba, just check your DMS, (laughs) go on LinkedIn. Um, make sure you're getting samples, get samples from multiple people. You're going to spend probably a good 500 and something dollars just on samples alone. That's normal. Make sure you're paying through Alibaba if and PayPal and PayPal goods and services. Once you find the sample you love, make sure the communication's there. Slowly order more and more, especially with tweezers. Make sure you're not talking to an agent or a middle person. Make sure you talk to the direct source. That's a big difference in price. Yes. Make sure you guys try and find a shipping broker who can cut your fees down on shipping. Yep. Also, if you order tweezers, make sure that if you we hand test our tweezers twice before we ship them out. If there's any that are bad, make sure that whoever you're working with if you set those aside take a photo or show them in a video like this isn't working my tweezer guy will replace that so make sure that you have that kind of communication that's key to like secure your money man we just literally gave you guys a college education that was literally (laughs) starting a lash business e-commerce 101 right there like that was the best that's the secret sauce we did everything shy of giving you our exact vendors you know what i mean like and that'll be next week's up i'm kidding (laughs) we are we are the vendors yeah we are the vendors (laughs) but listen i want to leave you guys one final thought And so this is the same thing I get on the lashing side of things. People are always like, I don't know if I can become a lash artist in, you know, Miami because there's so many other good lash artists and they probably won't want to come to me. That's a mental state. I could say the same thing about the lash products. You know what I mean? There's a million people out there. I started my own lash line. Started my own lash line. I'm doing big shit like Mike and Shauna. You know, it's like, I'm like, damn, another person in our area is selling lashes. What do we do? Nothing. Here's the thing. When we go to Napa, there's like 700 wineries, 700. 
are all of them going to be as big as like Del Dotto with the underground caves or Sterling with the gondolas that go up the mountain or the... You sound so bougie. No, I'm saying they're like the castle, Castillo de Amoroso. Yeah. Remember like that giant, like not all of them are going to be that. You know, we went to one one tasting. It was literally a guy's house. I thought we were going to get murdered. <laughs> I did it smelled too. like chicken noodle soup. Yeah. We went in there and like, I was like there was a bed there? in the back. She went to the bathroom. She's like, do the you live here? The comforter was messed up. I and he's was like, like, no. His hair is all standing up. <laughs> it was literally like we did a wine tasting in a living room. Like yeah. that was the winery. And so what I'm, the point I'm getting at is like, listen, not everything's going to be a big brand and not everything's going to be a little tiny. You know, It's going to be a blend. So don't get freaked out when you think like, oh, there's already so many other brands. Brand is what separates the competition. At yeah. the end of the day, it's all the same shit. It's just brand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like drinking beer. Well, it's not like all drinking, the same. It's, but, it's pretty close. But I'm saying, like, do I want to drink Budweiser? Do I want to drink Heineken? Do I want an IPA? Do I want a pale ale? It's still beer, right? And so there's just variations in different things. And that's the importance of starting a brand. So don't get freaked out and think, you know, hey, there's too many other companies. I'll never make it. That's not true. There were already so many big ones when we started. You know what I mean? We could have just easily waved the white flag and given up, too. Yeah. So don't be so afraid to give up with this stuff. Just know going into it, it's going to take a minute to get the public to trust you and start buying your products. Yeah. And your brand is honestly what carries it all. And honestly, we should do a podcast just on brand, brand, brand alone. Because anybody can anybody can start a lash line. It's your brand is what carries it. So you definitely have to have you know some business concepts, some personality, some uh, street smart. You know, it's not all book smart. And brand's not a logo. Some of you guys are like, I got my brand. I'm like, what is that? That's my logo. That's not, that's not the brand. That's not your brand. That's your logo, girl. <laughs> yeah, we'll do we'll, we'll do another episode on this, that alone. But listen, yeah. I just want to encourage you guys, if you are thinking about doing this, it's not an overly crowded space. It's only an overly crowded space in your head if you make it out to be. Yeah. I promise you guys, there's plenty of room for growth with that's it. That's a micro clip. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> with the, that blue shirt, too. All right, that's it. She's going to get me pregnant. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wrong way around all right that's all we got for you guys today obviously hopefully you got some great value from it i mean that really is a good that's segment a good episode, yeah it's if you literally listened to it and took notes we just gave you the recipe for it you know what i mean so please if you got value from today make sure you refer a friend share this episode with somebody else if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to our youtube channel subscribe to the podcast make sure you refer a friend subscribe to the last t t e a follow live bay lash live bay supplies and ob manufacturing yeah did I forget anything? Nope. All right, that's all. See you mm -hmm. next episode. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.